to the show everybody welcome to the show Woo! let's go welcome to the show yeah. it is me your boy rico no suave here on a one two one two on another one two of a wednesday everybody welcome to the show bienvenidos a todos mi gente i am so happy to be back with you hey it's been a gorgeous week mm, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's been a gorgeous week. You know what? I got to give a big shout out to my man, Robbie Wells, presidential candidate of 2024. He was here on Friday, flew in from South Carolina. I got to give a big shout out. That was an awesome interview. And hey, we're man, we support him. Uh, he said so many great things, but there's only a certain amount of time that we can actually talk. But I wanted to give a big shout out to my man, Robbie Wells. Thank you so much for coming from South Carolina just to be on the show with us. But we have a special guest co-host today. Valerie Malesio is away today. And I have to give a big shout out to my girl because she came in and said, let's rock this show. Hey, Woo! put your hands together for Giordani McCoy, everybody. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm honored to be here. Yes, yes. How you doing? I'm great. You great? Yes, I'm How, amazing. How's life? Life is good. Life is good. It would have been better if I didn't stay up till four in the morning to watch Blind Love or whatever, you know. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be all right. I'm here with you. Okay? Yeah. I'm bringing it, so it's all good. <laughs> all right. Yes. Everybody, you know, uh, you know, one of the things is, is that there's there's always something that's happening per month. And one of the things that's always happening per month, it's all about autism awareness, which is what we're doing this month. And I want to say to all of the families, to all of the parents, to all of the organizations that's out there that's giving, you know, men and women, adults, kids that hope that you are special to us. So I want to say, hey, you guys are awesome. I actually did um, a cooking show um, with, you know, cooking for autism. Mm. And it was awesome because I had parents as well as kids and we were cooking uh, chicken piccata. And then I had wow. them, I had actually two adults aside of me. So it really touches me to be able to do some great things like mm. that for, awesome. you know, for people. So it, mm. it's, it's awesome. It's hey. us. All right. All right, everybody. So we're going to actually keep that little logo up top because you know why? It is Autism Awareness Month. And thank you guys and all of the families and always beautiful people that's out there. All right, let's get it on. Let's get it on. You know why? Because I got to introduce <laughs> this gentleman that's here with us today. You know, big shout out to Beatrice Davis as well, too, for actually bringing this gentleman to us and, you know, stays down the block. You know, he stayed down the block. So I'm like, oh, man, oh, we, we got a second home now. We got a second home. This gentleman, I have to say, from where he's come from, where he came from, to what he's done in the past, I'm not going to spoil the whole story because this gentleman is... I want to say he's building his own legacy. This gentleman here has actually have done some things and now he's actually famous. In my eyes, he is famous. To a lot of people, he is famous. To people that's also that that inspiration, he is famous to the world. So we're going to hear a lot more about him because I want you guys to stand up. Hey, if you got money, you can click it. You can click it. You can click it. If you're a painter, go ahead and paint whatever you like. Whatever you whatever you want, put your hands together for none other than my man, Arthur J. Williams Jr. Let's go! Yeah, baby! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of energy in this room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is great. Man, welcome to the show, my man. Welcome thank you, thank you for show. having me, man. This is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still I'm, on the south side, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> south side of Chicago, stand mm -hmm. up. You know, stand up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, any shout outs you want to give out to anybody before we get started? You know, everyone I love, which is everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's it's so many people that, that have helped me get here and uh, that have supported my cause. And, and so, you know, it's... Uh, they know who they are, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh -huh. keep going. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, you know, uh, just just uh, just everyone that's helped me get here. Yeah. You know? And there's been a lot of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I got to talk to my girl. <laughs> so, uh, wait, 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 you know, because I, I don't want people to make 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 money because you holding a laptop like uh <laughs> <laughs> we in class. <laughs> I'm gonna have you put that laptop on the stand over there. Oh, right? really? that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what happens when you're a guest host. <laughs> I don't know. I love her. 
I got this. <laughs> oh my God, I love it, man. Oh, Bon Stephanie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, you know what? That just made my day. <laughs> All right. So you know, <laughs> from from where you came, as far as what you have done in the past, right? Uh, one of the things about to be able to print money. Uh, in a way, so many businesses could not catch as far as what was actually happening. I want to understand as far as what was that process like and how long did that actually last when it was like, whoa, this is actually counterfeit money. Um, this is not real money. Talk to us about, you know, that. Well, thing. it was never counterfeit to me. Okay, <laughs> it so. was all real to me. Yes, I mean, so. you know, it, as long as it worked, it yeah. was real. Oh, you know, yeah. that's how I looked at it. Yeah. But I mean, the process was long. It was years. It was um, it was always evolving. It was always changing. I was always experimenting with different things. Um, you know, the first thing that 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 I had to conquer was the paper, right? Because yeah. the first thing that people do is they touch it, right? Almost even before they look at it, right? right? You hand it to them and it's a touch, mm -hmm. right? So you had to overcome that, and uh, that was an extreme process, you know trying to find out a diff the paper that would mark and that would allow me to do different things. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, it was, uh, it was, it was constantly evolving, constantly changing to, yeah. to be better. Sure. Right. You know, and, uh, the early days it was, it was terrible. Right. You know <laughs> what I mean? But that's where, uh, determination and persistence comes in, you know, yeah. and that's something I've always had. And, yeah. and it was, it was more because of survival though, for me. Right. You know, like, I grew up on 31st and Halston, the projects, single mom, bipolar, you know, dealing with, you know, all the things that, you know, you deal with in the city. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, I started, you know, having to survive when I was 12, wow. you know, and, uh, you know, it just, it went from, uh, you know, stealing cars, breaking into garages to printing money, you know, yeah. and that, that, that's pretty much how it went, you know, and, and for me, you know, it was uh, like even with the businesses you mentioned, businesses. I I I, I just try to stay away from the mom and pop businesses. Right. You know, I'd, I'd hit you know the WalMarts, the Walgreens. You know, even now I still hit Walgreens. You know, but yeah. not with fake money though. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I still, right. I, 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 yeah. No. 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 So you know, my my, my wife trips out on me because I go oh shopping God. at Walgreens, right? <laughs> No, 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 no. Just, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, I mean, um, you know, I, I always, um, you know, my mom, she always took us to church when, when I was young. And, you know, and, and that, that really stuck with me through life, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, I still get up and pray every morning, you yes, know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a street guy, but, you know, even, you know, I mean, it's, uh, there, there's a, there's a, a, there's a, a moral compass within me you yeah. know and it, it's always been there so yeah you know you know i you know to be able to to hear that story and of course when a project was up you you hear about caprini grain you hear argue gardens and you hear about how life was during that time of survival right yeah. and i think during that time as far as the survival was about street life and how do you maintain and how you deal as far as with you know, big businesses that's actually growing while you still trying to grind and come up yourself. I think when when you start to actually think about creative ways, how can I actually survive with my mom or my family and still be able to try to move forward? You know, during that time, um, during that time itself, what made you uh, oh, how long did that last in regards to when you start printing out money? Because you said technology changed. Yeah. Like, things has changed. So, mm -hmm. evidently, you being able to find the right paper to be able to make that happen. When did it actually click that you found, like, boom, I found it? Because the government is always changing. Yeah. Um, so, how did you actually change with that? Well, I mean, once I had the paper, that was it. I was running. Okay. You know, and uh, that took that took a little while, but it was right when they changed uh, the hundred to the to the nineteen ninety six hundred. Yeah. I mean, we're going back some years, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. and and they started using the pen to market, and so you know, we just started ordering paper from from all over. I mean, everywhere back then, you didn't have Google, right. you had the yellow pages, That's right? That's right. Yep. You know, yep. my exactly. fingers were walking. 
<laughs> you know? They were walking, man. I mean, I was ordering paper from everywhere. And, and every time we'd get something, we'd mark it, we'd mark it, we'd mark it. And it always marked black, black, black. And, uh, and then finally, uh, me and my, my, my girl, Natalie, we, we were arguing about it because she was the one who was doing all the ordering. Right. Mm. And so she was getting frustrated because I was getting frustrated with her. Yeah. And she started, you know, screaming, yelling. She has the phone book in her hand and she's she's waving it at me and she slammed it on the on the table and she said, nothing's working. And she marked the phone book with the pen and it marked right. So here, the, the irony in all this is, wow. out of all the things that would have worked, it was sitting right in front of us the whole time. Yeah. You know? Wow. And so then I was able to take that and, and then manipulate it to do what I wanted, you know? And, and then once that happened, one, you know, because th the paper allowed us to do a few things. It allowed us to, to beat the marker, beat the watermark, beat the strip. And so that one thing killed three security features at one time. Wow. Right? Oh. So it was pretty, you know, it was like, wow, you know. And then there was a sense of uh, nervousness, you know, like, man, they're going to kill me for this? You know, like yeah. you're playing with their money. Of course. Right? Yeah. So, you know, you, that, I, I think that's probably one of the reasons why I never took it to a crazy level. Right. I still I'm had still cautious. Yeah, still cautious, still like didn't really want to mess with them too much. Yeah. You know, I it was more of um, what did I need to survive? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it always came back to that, you yeah. know. And um, but man, we had a lot of fun. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, we once that happened, then then we started to evolve in, in the, the different uh, print technologies. Back then it was real. It was real early with digital. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, offset presses were still around, um, you know, uh, plate burners were still around, uh, those, those type of uh, machines you could still get. And that's the stuff I like because I could make my own ink, mm. right, rather than trusting a computer or a digital, you know, a digital printer to do it. So most know? of your stuff was manual. So yeah, a lot okay. of it. Yeah, it was all handcrafted, that's you know. Awesome. I mean, yeah. even to the point of putting it together and, and you know, it, it was a... Uh, it was an interesting time, for sure, you know? I have, a, I have a question. So, I've never met anyone that has printed money. So, this, I'm like, wow, that's cool. Not I mean, many have. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm like, it's actually kind of cool. Like, I've yeah. never met anyone that, yeah. that's done that. So, you know, I think that's awesome. Anyways, that, and what I feel is awesome about it is that it's, it's different. Yeah. Okay, so... A lot of people are doing a lot of stuff that that's illegal. Okay. Yeah. Um, however, when you were doing that, what what made you decide to do that? Because I've never heard anyone doing that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, and there's a whole lot of other stuff to do. Oh so, yeah. So, at first, first of all, I think it's 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 very nichey. And yeah. from what I've learned about business, like the more you niche down. The yeah. bet, the more successful you usually become. Yeah. So it's very specific what you were doing, right? Yeah, right? So what made you decide to do, like, no, 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 forget all this other stuff I could do. I'm doing this. Well, for me, I mean, I, I got lucky, right? I mean, the first thing is I met an old man from the neighborhood who was an old time printer. And he took me under his wing when I was young. Mm. Um, it didn't last long. He ended up, you know, something happened to him. But it, it gave me enough um information and it 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 opened my mind to like i i i, I didn't like stealing mm -hmm. right. you know like right. i don't want to take from nobody right. you know right. and, and 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 drugs you know given to people is that's another thing that's just mm -hmm. you know you're, you're destroying a person's right. mind right you know right so for me printing money just seemed like the perfect thing mm -hmm. yeah. you know i'm not i'm not taken from you right and I'm not hurting you, right. you know, I'm just moving like a ghost, you yeah. know, making it, spending it. And then and then even taking it to another level to where, you know, most of the things that we would buy almost, you know, you know, after after we first started where it was buying things for ourselves, you could only buy yourself so much. Right. right? And then we started buying things for, you know, family and friends. But 
even that starts to get old because then, you know, uh, it starts being expected, mm. right? Yeah. You know, and then and then that started to become a problem. And so then it was like, you know what? Whatever we buy, let's give it away. And so we started giving it to the, to the charities. Wow. wow. Yeah. So we would, you know, we would only buy our kids toys, kids clothes, diapers, and because I was on, at the Salvation Army, you know, when we were homeless. Uh, up on Sheridan, I don't think it's there anymore, but, it, you know, it used to be a homeless shelter for families up there. Okay. That's where, you know, you see the Salvation Army boxes everywhere, man. We would just drop the stuff there, drop it there, you know. Oh, and know. and so for me, it was almost a, a feeling of giving back, too, right, mm. uh, for the kids that, that didn't have, like, like when we were homeless, right. you know. And so, you know, and even now with my art, you know, I, I, get, I, I donate my art. I just raised some kid, some money for some kids in Wichita, you nice. know, for school. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I do a hundred, hundred percent donation with my paintings now. That's you know, awesome, to where you know, so I still am allowed to uh, do exactly what I love, which is create. You mm -hmm. know, I still print money, but it's just art. You right, know, right, right. and I'm still able to to help the kids. You know, That's so. That's love, man. Yeah, oh yeah, my God. God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm impressed that you so for me your value system is screaming yeah it's scre like it is on the top of this building at the roof yeah like ah, my values right? right so your values are <laughs> honesty yes. um uh charity yeah okay yep. mm -hmm. so um uh, so you decided you're like well if i'm gonna if i'm gonna hang on this side of the you know the fence right, right right right, right. Yeah. I'm gonna do it based on my values. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's amazing. I think I think, I think having that's that, that type of value is awesome. You know, it's it's you know, I it's it's not totally like this other person that that went to jail, but I think of it as when someone is trying to help the community mm -hmm. and trying to do something for the community of what that person went through, but also look at the community as hey, I want to be a leader. For, for people or role model for people knowing that I might be doing something wrong, but I also feel like I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's where you have always been mm -hmm. a goal minded person. Even when you were little, when you start using this um, paper and knew exactly where you were actually going. I think that's I think that's always stuck with you, mm -hmm. which I think that's awesome. Right. Yeah, but of sure. course, you know, by us. Doing certain things, you know, we do pay, you know, we do pay the price, right? Yeah, uh, I pay you know, it too. Is, right? Yeah, so yeah. Um, I do want to fast forward uh, a little bit in regards to, you know, once you, you know, served your time, right? Mm -hmm. And once you served the time, during the time that you were actually serving, what was going through your mind in regards to saying, hey, once I get out of here, here's my next step? Wow. Man, that that that's that's a deep situation right there, you know. Because for me, when I when I got arrested again for this, uh, it it was a crazy time. They were they were the Rolling Stone magazine just came out with an article about me. I was thirty three oh, years old. Wow. They were talking about making a movie about me. They were writing a book about me, right? And at, during all this, while they're doing that, I'm still printing money. Right. I mean, I'm literally yeah. flying out to, you know, L.A. and meeting with producers and, and, and agents and then coming back here and <laughs> right. printing money, you know, right, right, right. like I didn't. Wow. I was like, whatever, you know. Yes. Yeah. And 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 then I had my son. I had a 15 year old that was living with me. Right. And he was doing music. And and that's how I, that's that's how I ended up getting back into it, because. I was trying to get him into his music, which was expensive back then. They didn't have like the home studios and stuff. Sure. You had to go into the studio. You had to get producers and all this. And it was costing money. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to, me and my son are finally connected. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get him into this. And, and it worked out terribly, you know? I mean, it was a disaster, but, you know, I ended up, you know, getting arrested, uh, going back to prison. Mm. And, and what happened with me is, I was staying at MCC downtown Chicago and I got into it with the assistant warden because they took my, my uh, visits from me. Mm. 
Mm. I, they were, I don't know why they were messing with me, but they were messing with me. And I got into it with them. Next day, they shipped me off to uh, Wisconsin, way up north in Wisconsin in the county jail and threw me in a single cell. Mm. So now here I am in a single cell, you know, feeling like, man, what, what happened? Right. You know, my whole life has just come to a, a, a screeching halt. Mm. And I had a, I had a, a, a dream. It was it was a real beautiful vision. I was I was, you know, uh, on the floor, just just really tore up. And I got up and I wrote this poem. Mm. And after I wrote that poem, I started reading as many books as I could. I would that, that was the only thing we could do is order from from the intern library. So I was reading biographies, you know, because I wanted to find out what it meant to be a good man. So I started reading, um, you know, I read about Tesla, Henry Ford, Link. I mean, I was reading about everybody. Anyone I could read about, I would read about. Mm -hmm. right. And I finally came to this book about Michelangelo. It was the agony and ecstasy. Right. And and and. I just fell in love with the Renaissance and I fell in love with this life. Like I felt like I was there, you know, wow. and when you're in a cell by yourself mm -hmm. and you're reading mm -hmm. all these men's lives and women's lives too, mm -hmm. your mind is able to create this visual. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and what I learned about all this was all these people failed. Mm -hmm. All these people mm -hmm. had problems. Mm -hmm. None of their lives were perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of them had real bad problems, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, worse than mine, mm -hmm. you know, morally, mm -hmm. right? But at the end, they became successful. Mm -hmm. And that gave me hope. That, that was yeah. the first moment where I had hope, you know? I had a long sentence ahead of me, 105 months. And so that's when I started plotting and planning, yeah. you know? Yeah. And started sketching, started, um, started writing, you know? And, and then when I ended up getting to prison, after I got my time, that's when I started getting into, you know, uh, just the creative, let the creative energy flow through me. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't know that two and a half years later, my son would join me, mm. right? That 15 year old, wow. now he had 18 wow. and, and he was still playing, right? Wanted to be like dad. Wow. And that was the second moment that I said, okay, this is it. Yeah. This is enough is enough. Right. Right. Because now I have my son right. in prison with me, you know, and as, as painful as it was to see him there, me and him became best friends. Mm. And he got to see because one thing about prison, it allows you to become either extremely disciplined or extremely sloppy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I that's, mm -hmm. right? that's what I've observed. So, yeah. so my thing was, is I woke up at five in the morning and I wrote for, you know, all the way to breakfast. Then I would do my whatever job they had me doing, which I usually paid someone off to do it for me. You know, <laughs> I mean, always a little something. Right. Yeah. And then I would go work out. And then at night I would paint. And this was my regiment every wow. single oh, day. Man. And when my son got to see that. Now I got him on a regiment. Yeah. I got him boxing. He's doing his music, right? And I was so proud of him about his music because, you know, in prison, it's real racial segregated, right? Mm -hmm. um, to the point of danger. Yeah. Right? yeah. It could be yeah. dangerous, right? Sure. And, you know, you have your whites, you have your Hispanics, you have your African Americans, you have everyone in their group, right? And, and you don't really see people you know, um, intermingle too much, you know. Uh, but because we were from Chicago and there were a lot of brothers from Chicago that, you know, either from the low end, D. Nash, yep. like my brother, man, he's, he's an activist here in Chicago, walked to, the, to uh, D.C. Um, he actually, you know, he actually got behind me when I got into it with some, with some, um, some Aryan nation stuff down there trying to recruit whatever you know i was like i ain't down with that stuff you know and just kind of turned a little ugly but it 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 it, it was smoothed out but one of the proudest moments in prison i had was here's my son he's been down with me for a minute he's been doing his regiment and in in prison they have uh concerts for the holidays 
right? Mm. Yeah, real nice actually, wow. man. Come out with the music, the drums, you know, they got the music room. The prison we were at in Forest City, even T.I. was at the prison we were at, you wow. know? And, um, and so my son, they did an American Greed show on us, on me, and here I am in prison watching myself on TV, right? Next to my son. Wow. It was a trip, right? <laughs> Um, but it was painful because I had to face all the failures. Mm. The American greed didn't really show anything good. Mm. It showed me being good at what I did, but right. yeah. it, it, it was showing my dad taking off this and that. And, and so I, I remember becoming really, you know, just like, man, you know, it, that even made it more where like, I got to get this right. But they played one of my, son, my son's songs on the American greed. Right. Oh, wow. And so the next day we were like famous in prison. Right. right. We were famous prisoners, wow. man, you know, <laughs> and, um, and, and, and this, this young brother from uh, Tennessee, I think, came to my son and said, hey, man, would you would you rap with us at the concert? Because they would do it for three days, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So you would have the brothers doing their stuff. You'd yeah. have the white dudes doing their rock and roll and country. And you'd have, uh, you know, the Hispanics doing, uh, you know, their their their, their music, you yeah. know, and all, so it was like, but you never seen them together, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was always separate. separate. So. Yeah. So when they came to my son and they asked him, he came to me and he's like, man, dad, what do you think, man? I'd like to. I said, well, what, what do you want to do? He said, man, I'd love to do it, you know, but, you know, a white dude rapping in prison. I don't know. You know, I said, listen, man, whatever you want to do, you do it. And I'm with you 100 percent. And you and ain't going to have no problems. And I got to tell you, man, I got pictures of this, you know, because they let you take pictures. Yeah. He was getting ready for it and he was going down to the music room and he was working with the dudes. And in that day that he performed. The whole yard was out. Wow. Whites, blacks, mm. Mac, everybody was out. Yeah. Right. And here he is and he was just rocking the mic, man. And everybody loved it. Wow. Nice. That was a change. Wow. That was a, that was a difference making moment, you know? Wow. Yeah. And 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 you know, and our, our dream was that he was going to get out and do his music. I would get out and I'd do my art and writing. You know, he uh he he he, he does his music a little now, but he's got a job, just bought a house. He, we both been out 10 years. Okay. Right? I got out 3 months before him. He got out and got his CDL. Nice. I was delivering liquor and, and, and cleaning toilet bowls, you know, I mean, that's, that's what right. I was doing when I got up, but that's, that's what right. I did to that's make right. it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's probably the coolest thing. And, you know, but that's what got me motivated. That's what made it to where I said, okay, this is it, man. You know, no more. I like this, man. Oh, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. Thank All you. right, man, we're going to take a quick, small commercial break. Everybody, we're going to show you our social media Yes, we are so happy that we'll have my man, Arthur J. Williams, J.R. Dot Jr. That's what we do around here. Man, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm touched, man. I think, I think a lot of people are actually touched as well, too. When we come back, everybody, you know, we're going to actually go to your comments. So we'll be back. 30 seconds. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We already have the artist, the name of Arthur J. Williams Jr. You having a good time? Yeah, man. A lot of energy here. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, loving yeah. this, man. We we are so happy to actually have you here, man. I am, like I said, I am touched by your story. I am touched by you being out of prison, but also just the creativity, the, the goals that you have, the mindset, and I think what you and your son have built to be best friends. I think it's the greatest thing ever. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I think by you and your son just putting that together and also 
just rocking it and also putting bringing all of the cultures together yeah in, in regards it was cool. to hip hop it was man. cool it was I cool i think that's much blessing what is your son name art Art. Artie the third, man. Artie the third. Hey, hey, bro. Hey, I have to say, man, much Art. love to you, Art. man. Shout out to man, Art. Man, shout out to <laughs> Art, man. Shout yeah. out to Art. So, you know, when you got out, and, you know, I, I'm really astounded because I have so many questions in regards to that, in regards to what the media had for you mm. while you were in, and also when you came out. You talked about Rolling Stones, and mm. you talked about you know, these other media outlets who just knew about you. It, it reminds me of kind of like Catch Me If You Can. You ever mm. seen that? Uh, Catch Me If You Can, he was just, just catch me if you can because I'm actually, you know, doing something bad. But next thing you know, he's working for the government, mm. right, at the end. But he's also doing something good for the government. Mm. What I'm thinking for you is even though you had the counterfeit money and you were actually helping people, it's almost as if like that good karma came back on you just like that. Like it's 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 almost like hey, bad karma say hey, you shouldn't be doing that, but then you also helped other people. Mm -hmm. And I think over the time your karma, you know, you paid your dues, you paid your price, but the karma was still with you all the way through no matter what. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, now that you're being an artist, you stay on top of being an artist. Mm -hmm. Now I want to talk about how the media actually was working with you in regards to your, you know, paintings and stuff like that. When did that come into play or did that ever come into play? You know, it's had its moments, right? You know, it's uh, it's like it, it, it. there's moments where I would get a lot of media play. OK. And then there'd be quiet. OK. You know, which which I actually kind of like because um, that 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 lifestyle would constant in the media mm. it could get a little hectic right yeah. you know for me though when i got out of prison it wasn't there there was nothing there okay. for me you know i went okay. to the halfway house and social media was kind of big at that time i didn't even know what a phone was an iphone right, right. and uh and and i i still kind of even to this day you know i still like my privacy you mm. know i'll post on social media but just a picture of my my painting, you know, I, I don't, see. I don't really get into my personal life too much. I see. And and uh, I don't know if it's because I'm, you know, a little bit older or something, you know. But for me, um, when I got out, my first thing was get a job. Yeah. Right. I yeah. had to get a job, you know. Yeah. And my first job was working at a building on at Six West Hubbard cleaning toilet bowls, man. And I tell you, I cleaned. I cleaned them. Man. I was about <laughs> yes, to say sir, it. I yes, cleaned sir. the shit, right? <laughs> but I cleaned them, man. You know, and 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 it was a job, though. It was my first job I ever had in my life. Okay. And okay. it was the best feeling in the world, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. and then I started driving uh, uh, transporting cars for my godfather out in Addison, and then I went to work for Wirtz. So I, I went through some things, but after about two years of get, of, of of being out, you know, I almost went back. I almost mm, went back to the wow. life of crime because, you know, fifteen dollars an hour, twelve yeah. fifty an hour. I didn't know how to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, after after ta uh, whatever, you're left with nothing. And and I'm like, man, it it, it did a few things. One, it, it 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 caused me to respect people who work hard for their mm -hmm. money. Mm. Yeah. Right? Mm. Because not Good saying point. that what I did wasn't hard. Sure. I mean, I spent hours and days and years perfecting the craft and making the money. Sure. But it was a di there was a difference from getting up and, and going and doing the same thing every day, day in, day out. Yeah. For little peanuts, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was really uh, humbling, right, for me. And and then I got to the point where I just didn't feel like I could do it anymore, you know. Yeah. And again, my son saved my life, you know. Right when I was getting in in in, in a position to do something, he walked in on me, and went crazy because he was doing good he was driving his truck you know and and everyone thought i was doing good right right you know right but it was a facade you know wow it was it was it was counterfeit wow. you know yeah and uh but when wow. he when he caught me you know i wasn't doing nothing yet but i was moving some things and he seen it and he literally jumped in it he screamed yelled, jumped in his car and he took me back to the place that 
seven years prior, I got arrested in front of him. Mm. It's, it's trippy, you know? Mm. And at that moment, man, I walked away. I walked away. And, you know, and that's when I decided, you know, okay, I'm, I'm just going to have to just figure this out, you know? And uh, an older gentleman, Joseph Cacciatore, he took me under his wing for a little while. That really saved my life. You know, he owns a Cacciatore. Cacciatore, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. No, nah, man, unbelievable family. Uh, I met him through his son, Joe Jr., and they really, uh, they really changed my life, actually. You know, wow. spending time with them. He, 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 he allowed me to be around people who were successful. Mm, that's so that important. Yeah. So important, you know, because up yeah. to that point, I didn't that's know, so important. you know, yep. and uh, I was the first mate on his boat and just, you know, he, he, he made my family his family, you know, mm. and then from there I started painting houses and then um, my house burned down right after. So here I'm finally getting my life together and my house burns down. Wow. Right. And uh, and then the next man that changed my life was Frank. Geralimo, he was another person who came in. He was the one, him and his partner, who said, hey, man, you know, what's it going to take for you to just paint? And I told them, and they gave it to me. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And, I, and, I, and I haven't looked back, you know? I haven't looked yeah. back. So, you know, I, I, I really do believe that, you know, it's, uh, to, it's a community yeah. to be successful. It takes yeah. a community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. And... Um, and I've had an amazing one, and still do. I still do have an amazing community. Man, that's love, man. You know, that's you know love. what I, I like noticed? That. What's that? So, I'm not trying to get too woo-woo on anybody. Okay, however, <laughs> however, um, you have, so you're telling your story, and it's like you've been gifted yeah. a shield of protection. Oh, yeah. For sure. You were gifted yes. that shield. You were gifted mentorship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Yeah. You were gifted resourcefulness. Mm -hmm. Yes. You were gifted creativity. Mm -hmm. And you were, and, and you know, you, 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 you did time, right? You did time. And then there was gifts in that as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? All when, when, you know, you developed a close relationship with your son, you guys made a change in the whole culture of the, the prison. And then when you got out, Hold up, you got some more mentors. Right. Okay? Right. And then and it, but that whole entire time what I'm what I'm really like listening for and the reason why is because there's so many people like there could be somebody watching right now, you know? And they're at a low or they're trying to figure something out and I'm a big believer that we I believe in God. I believe that God has granted us that we have everything that we need inside of us. Yeah. And your story is exactly that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's exactly that. So, and I just, it just sounds like you really just had a, this bubble of protection. I love your mentorship, though. Because oh, that no. is so yeah, it, important. It's so yeah. bomb, people, people, don't, people don't understand. Right. People don't get it yeah. until, um, so I'm, I'm a life coach, right? Yeah, so yeah. I've hired and it. And, and it, what it does, when you have mentorship, it collapses time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. It yeah. collapses time to help you move forward. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, I love your story. Yeah. You know stop. what? And, and, you know, before uh, I say something else, but I have to give a big shout out to people that's actually watching. Beatrice Davis says hello. Uh, she says, what an incredible story. Janet Moore checking in. John T. for free is actually checking in. Patty Escobar is actually checking in. Hello, Patty. Uh, and also, uh, we have my man. I think his name is Jose. Jose Berriel. How are you, Papa? Thank you guys so much for actually tuning in to the show as well, too. And everybody else is tuning in. Thank you guys so much. Yes, and, and I do hear you guys. Um, I do hear you guys in regards to YouTube. So we did have some technical issues uh, in regards to with YouTube itself. I think it was more of just the notifications. Um, so it was pretty much on YouTube and when we're actually going live. So sometimes they'll give a notification, sometimes they do not. So uh, I appreciate you guys bearing with, with us. There was a question. Uh, Beatrice Davis says, how was he respected in prison and how did they want him to teach how to paint? 
So did you also, were you teaching people how to paint as well too when you were in prison? No, nah, I you was know? just learning, you know. I had I had uh, a teacher okay. who was teaching me some things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it, prison was pretty pretty easy for me, man. I mean, I'm from the south side of Chicago. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Know? So I know how to move through those through those uh, environments, you know, I've been, been dealing with it for a long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so prison wasn't really that difficult except you had a fence around you and couldn't leave, you know? Mm. Yeah. But my mind could, mm. right? Yeah. You know, so my mind could. And that's, uh, that's, that's awesome. I mean, well, that, that's cool that you were able to, to maneuver, but you have to be able to maneuver street style to understand where you need to be able to survive. Oh, right? yeah. But sure. that's, that's, that's with, you know, anyone understanding the difference between how to maneuver when there's bad around you and when there's good around you too, yeah, yeah. right? Because there's people that can be good around you and can still be envious of you and whatever oh, your talent is. So. Our world, man, I had no clue how, how, how uh, whew, it, it, it could be worse in the streets. Man. Yes, sir. For yes, real. Sir. Yeah, yes, man. sir. We're going to take a quick break real quick. We got to show them our commercial pricing. Um, so... Everyone, so this is our commercial pricing. You know, if you ever want to actually come on and have an ad run on our show, of course, we got three different packages that you'll be able to use, which is the Rico Sizzle, Rico Standout, and Rico's Oremi Hente. You can actually use that <laughs> one as well, too. So also, it goes from two to three to four shows. And of course, you have a 30-second commercial that will run twice per show, right? And also, your logo and website and hyperlink will also be on our show as well too, you know, during that time. So you have 45, 95, 145. Send a message to Rico at the Rico no Suave Show dot, dot com. Of course, you know that's me, Tusari, right? And then we also have over 10,000 views per month. So remember, we're actually on Roku. We're on Apple TV now. We're actually on, of course, Facebook, YouTube, and all of the platforms. So our growth is really big. So make sure you take advantage of our commercial pricing. Get on board with the Rico No Suave Show. All right, let's get back. We got to clap for you, man. We got to clap for you. You know, Arthur, you are you, you are a gem of the world, man. Um, I know we're down to like 11 minutes left, but no, no, time flies you. by so fast. Right? I know. I want more. I just want just one question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, 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 okay. Of course. So if if there's someone watching right now, okay. Yes. And they feel that they're in it. I, I think it's gold when you ask people that have really been through. Sure. Right? Um, and they feel like they're stuck. Because yes. it sounds like you've had that experience several times, right? Oh, yeah, Where you right. felt like you were like, I'm yeah. in quicksand. Yeah. How the hell do I get out of here? Oh, excuse right. me. Can I say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right, my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So what would you say to them? Like a short version, but what would you say to them? Well, you know, and, and the whole thing about stuck, I mean, even I was just in a situation in November, right? It doesn't ever stop, right? right? Life brings obstacles, right? right. It brings um, situations that feel very uncomfortable, right? What I've learned is before when something would happen, I would start panicking. Right? Mm. Then I would start feeling hopeless. Yeah. Right? Mm. Self-esteem. Yeah. Mm. Right? And then, and then, and then that, that's where the downward spiral comes. Mm. I've learned that time really is on your side in the situations because if I just sit and, and just think about it and, 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 and let it go, whatever I'm dealing with, whatever I'm stuck in, the next day will come. Mm -hmm. Right? And then the next day will come after that. Before you knew it, just like the prison sentence, doing seven years, it's over with. Yeah. All situations pass. It's just a matter of how you're going to pass through them. Right. Nice. right. They're, they're all going to pass, like but how are you going to pass through it? Are you going to pass paranoid, anxiety, mm. or are you just going to just, just breathe, take a step back, and let it work itself out? My biggest thing is whenever, you know, being an artist has been a real... It's been an interesting journey. I've been a professional artist for seven years now, mm -hmm. and I'm independent, which means I don't have any galleries that rep me. I don't have a manager. I don't have a publisher. I sell all my art on my own. Wow. It's tough. Mm. It can be moments of greatness where I did Rolls Royce, and the Perillo family took me in and let me take over their spot, and it was amazing. But then I was in the desert with nothing, right? You know, yeah. I've had those moments, right? But what I've learned is... As long as I keep getting up every morning, 
right? And going out, and even if I do one thing, mm, that's one what I thing, say. Yep. one thing a day, one thing a day, man, mm -hmm. yeah. it adds up and it pulls you out of there. Yes. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. right. You yep. have to stay positive. You have to believe in what you're doing, right? And you know, because I, I talk to guys that get out of prison, right? Because I was there. I was with you. I know what they do. They think about being traders, real estate, right? Uh, book writers, right? I mean, because there's not much in there that you can dream about, mm. right? Right. So you dream about the things that you think will bring fast money, right? Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying. But the average, the average, it takes ten years usually mm -hmm. to reach success in something. Ten years. Like when I was reading about Damien Hurst and, 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 I, and it said something about it took him 10 years to make his first million. So this man had to go through 10 years of struggling, pain, ups and downs, all kinds of stuff. But what it told me is he never quit. That's right. Mm. Yeah. He never quit. Mm -hmm. He kept getting up every day. Mm -hmm. He kept educating himself. He kept making himself better. He kept striving for what his dream was. Right. And, and that's what happens to a lot of people is that that tough moment comes. And, and of course, man, I've, I've felt insecure. I felt like I, I wasn't going to ever do it. I felt like, you know, things were going to, you know, not work out. But immediately I pushed those thoughts aside and, and, and I said, OK, I'm just going to keep keep grinding. I'm going to keep getting up. I'm going to keep working hard and. Even if I don't have no gas to get to where I got to go, you know, I'll walk. Right. Yeah. That's the determination you have to have, mm. you know. And so for me, it's just, you know, how are you going to pass through it? You're going to pass through it with positivity or are you going to pass through it, you know, feeling anxious and all that. And so I would just tell people just just b to believe that the day will get better. Yes, sir. Mm. It will get better. Yes, sir. Like that. Like Man. That. So, you know, someone special just tuned in or maybe have been tuning in and finally commented, and it's your son. Oh, wow. Arthur Williams just tuned in. He said, proud of you, Pops. What's up, Arthur? What's up, Art? Man. Hey, we're proud of you, too. I mean, we're definitely proud of you as well, too. And it's so good that you and your father are best friends mm. and how you guys went through the struggle and the times together to be able to still make ends meet. And, yes, you know, I'm proud of your dad as well, too. And you guys are a two pizza in a pod, man. I, I have know. to tell you that he, right he's now. He's an amazing kid, man. So I do want to talk about, um, there's a photo. We did a profile photo mm -hmm. for you. But I do want to pull this up. I want to talk about your art, yeah. right? And when you were actually also in prison, what were you, what was the, what was the mindset of what you wanted to be? Because you're kind of unique when it comes to art, yeah. right? So what what's in the mind of Arthur J. Williams Jr. when it comes down to him painting? Because this is original. This oh, yeah. right here is yeah, yeah. something that, you know, people don't just wake up and say, hey, I want to paint like this. Yeah. Okay. It, there's, yeah. there's a thought process behind it. So what is, when people look at your painting, what do you want them to see? Mm, good question. That. You know, so for me, it, it, it started in prison with money, right? Mm -hmm. I was painting money. It used to trip the guards out, right? You yeah. know, here I am in there in prison for, for money, and now I'm painting it. In. <laughs> like, man, can't you get enough, dude? You know? Right. right. But, you know, <laughs> like, for I real, right? I call that persistence, <laughs> yeah, okay? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, for me, it started with just old currency like this. You know, I, I, I've always had, I always, you know, looked at currency as art. Right. It's sure. especially the older currency. It is. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and and then when I started painting it, it was more or less just like painting what is right. Yeah. That's where it started. Now I, I use money throughout my art in a manner to show different stories of my life. Oh, wow. Mm. Right. So that Wall Street piece that you showed, I actually got invited to Wall Street. I was actually oh, wow. on Wall Street. Right. Go figure. You know, here's a guy, and, and, and it, it was not easy for me to get into Wall Street because yeah. technically they don't let felons on the floor, right? right. Yeah, right. 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 But, right. but right. they let me on the floor. <laughs> so here I am standing under the bell. I got wow. a picture, right? So it's like, wow. the bell. Oh, it was, it was nuts. Man, you need to make a 
movie. Oh, it was right. God's man standing on the throne. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but so, so, so my heart is 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 a reflection of my life, things I've went through. Um, it's it's starting to change now. I'm literally right in an evolutional period, right? Because I love to paint oils, okay. right? In prison, we didn't have no printers, no computers, no nothing. Right. It was sketch it out. Put it on the canvas, paint it, right? Yeah. And I would spend three, six months, even a year. I spent a year on a painting one time. Wow. A year. But when getting out and trying to be a professional artist, I can't spend a year on a painting. Of course. Right. Right. I got to get down. Right. You know? Right. And and when I started having some of my success, I I ended up doing a show at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house uh, some years ago. And right after that show, Everybody wanted my art, yeah, but I didn't have none. Oh, right. Prepared. I wasn't prepared. I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, success isn't always a good thing sometimes sure. if you're not ready for it. Yeah, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And so now here I was trying to to make more art, and and I went through my growing pains for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I was I was trying to do the. Uh, oils and and then i started trying to use acrylics because it dried faster and then you know so so these past you know seven years you know my style evolved because i still print right i like to print money and paint on it that's going to be i think um the most valuable of my work when i'm gone Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. is those pieces because then it allows me to combine who i am yeah right because i'll print a sheet of money and then i'll paint on it you know, I still, it's, it's the best I still thing. Win. I still love it, man, you know? I like that. But, I like that. But that is so cool, though. But now I'm even getting to the point where, you know, I just did this collection. I actually created it with my son where I did um, a Lion King. I did uh, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Caesar, Marcus Aurelius, Plato, and Socrates. So I'm painting all these characters, right? But I read all these characters. Okay. Right? Mm. I I I fell in love with all these characters. Yeah. Right. So they're a part of my story, you know. Yeah. And and I'm going back to my oils. Yeah. I kind of had stepped away from the oils a little while, little for for a little while while I was in L.A. I started getting into photography. I was getting photos from uh, Bob Bonus collection. I got some photos. Um, Mark Hauser, I think. He's a Chicago photographer. I got some photos of him, but it was it was throwing me off, you know. Yeah. I wasn't that wasn't who I was. Right. You know. Right. Now I just got back to Chicago in October, and when I left LA, I said, "Man, I'm going back to who I was, who 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 I am." Yeah. Which is, I like to paint. Yeah. And I like to print. And and since I've been back to Chicago, man, I have been snapping. <laughs> I mean, snapping. I've yeah, been creating. Dude, oh, dude. just I've been creating so much. And uh, my goal is to do a hundred painting show. Woo, hundred, right? Easy. You know. Well, you know, it, it ain't easy, man. I got paint on me, man. I got. I don't know. Con- that, yeah. I almost keeping the yeah, so, you know. so, so I I I really want to know. Have you ever thought about making a movie? I mean, I've I've talked to 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 I've you know, Talk. yeah. I mean, I've I've talked to producers and and, and writers and you know, I was out in L.A. for a couple of years during the pandemic and I had met everybody. You know, yeah. I, I actually signed a deal. I need this to be a movie. I'm sorry. I know. I'm, re- I'm I excited. Know. I, no, I this, think, tell I think, me, this is not a halified story. This hey, this is a great story because. <laughs> It's 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 involving yes. everything from turning negative into a positive, yes. and then you still feel like you still got some things to maintain and continue yes. to move forward. And the thing yeah. is, it's a true story. It's a true story, <laughs> right? It's not fake. Wow. And then, have you ever seen a story with somebody that used to print money? And they, no, no, it doesn't exist. This, uh-uh, not oh, at you all. know what? That, I, I'm getting mad. And I'm still, <laughs> I'm getting and mad. I'm, and I'm, I'm getting still mad. Uh-uh. I don't want to talk to you unless you say you're going to make a movie. <laughs> I'm sure that at some point they will. Oh you know, it, 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 like I said, when I was out in L.A. and they had talked about it and uh, it just didn't it didn't it didn't work out right. You know, you know even even let's just say not a movie, a docu-series. 
Mm-hmm. Even a docu series, yes. Something. Even docu series will still have. It's almost like I, I love the Tiger King. I love that show, yeah. right? <laughs> but even if you had like the episodes to keep people on their feet, this could be a that, bomb Netflix series. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? And I'm still on the south side. You know my what? guy was on Morgan uh, Street. Oh right? my god! Yeah, I'm I still see over. so Man. much. Like I, I can envision you reading the books in the cell. Like I can literally see that in a movie. Yeah, I can yeah, see it, yeah. and I can see you. You know, look. Oh, it's just amazing. I, I I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. I, so I want this to be a movie so bad, or something, a documentary. We definitely something. gotta have you back on the show yeah. because this hour went by so fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of your accomplishments and your accolades that you have done, you know, it's hard to say that. We know why you spent time in prison, but someone upstairs had a reason for you to be able to come out of prison to be able to get with the family, to catch your stories. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So yeah, that, for, for them to be able to take you in as family, it's, mm-hmm. it, it's so much. It just tells you that you have a gift, just like mm-hmm. um, Donnie was saying, Jared Donnie was saying, there's a lot that you actually have that's involved that I think uh, the world... There's more people that needs to know about mm-hmm. this. It has to. That's why I have this mm-hmm. shirt. Oh, nice. I got a shirt for you, man. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, a shirt yeah, for yeah, you. It's yeah, like yeah. you are definitely a gem of the world. And mm-hmm. sometimes when people do something bad, they really, you know, they either come out and they don't do anything mm-hmm. and they wind up going back in. Yeah, and 76% of them go back in. Exactly, mm-hmm. because what they're accustomed to, mm-hmm. they can't break that habit. Mm-hmm. You broke that habit. Mm-hmm. You broke that habit even when your son was there. You broke the habit when your son took you to that spot mm-hmm. to yeah. say, hey, this is right here. I'm about to show you what's about to happen to you if you tend to go down that road. Mm-hmm. Your son, Art, took you to a place of remembrance and said, hey, you know mm-hmm. what? I don't want to do that ever again. Now look at you. We're talking about getting a movie, a docu series at the same time too. This shirt represents everything about what you have done, what you have paid your time for, and also where you're going in the future. So welcome to the show, man. Awesome. Hey, thanks, welcome man. Appreciate it. Yes. 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 Rico No Suave yes. Show, man. Wow. So appreciate it. Man, I want to thank you so much. We definitely gotta have you back. Um, and also, you know, we, you know, we also do live events, so we're definitely going to be talking about when yeah. you have something at your gallery. We want to be in that presence to be able to tell more people about what you're doing, For the sure. greatness of the stuff that you're doing. Appreciate but we will put up your social media because right. everybody got to know yes. where you're, where you're oh around. So, you know, we got Arthur J. Williams Jr. on Instagram, everybody. So make sure you guys go to Arthur J. Williams on Jr. on yeah. Instagram. So make sure you please go ahead and follow him there. Blow it up. All right, here's yes. the next one. We have Facebook. Yes, Arthur J. Williams Jr. as well, too, on Facebook as well, too. So make sure you go ahead and follow him and like everything he's doing. Here's the next one. Oh, yeah, we got websites, baby. We got ArthurJWilliamsJr.com. Now, on your website, of course, that's going to be showing all of your products. And yeah, you can also yeah. go to your website on yeah. your social media yeah. as well, too. And then we have one last one. We got this one. I like this name. Yeah. Uh, we got the Da Vinci. Yeah, uh, da Vinci's, Vinci's Gallery. gallery. Uh-huh. That is the bomb.com. Yeah. So make sure you guys go there. You know, make sure you go there and support my man, Arthur J. Williams. Junior doing great things out here from counterfeiting kind of money to actually being a famous artist in our eyes and also telling his story to the whole world. My man, thank you, thank you so much for being thank on the show, man. Yeah, much yeah. love. Yeah. Put your hands together, everybody. Yes, my man, Arthur J. Williams. Yes, yes, yes. All right, everybody, we got to get out of here. We want to thank you guys so much. <laughs> uh, John T. for free says, uh, then I need to start saving money so I can buy that money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right everybody we want to thank you guys so much for being on the show with us today and thank you to our special co-host today giardani <laughs> mccoy yes thank you so much for being on the show with me today you'll see more of her i mean she'll be coming <laughs> here and there but i appreciate you being on the show all right everybody let's get to our social media as well let's put up our social media which is www.ricodonsuaveshow.com. That is where you'll find all of our highlights and also our past 
interviews as well. And of course, don't forget, you can advertise with us on our website. Here's the next one. Boom! You already know it's Rico No Swale Show on Instagram. So make sure you go to Instagram. Follow us on Instagram, please. Make sure you follow us because we just got so much stuff out there as well, too. Here's the next one. YouTube. No, Facebook. I'm sorry. They asked us to come back. Facebook. Yes, Rico No Suave Show. Make sure you go ahead and like, 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 and love, love, love. That's what <laughs> Valerie says. All right, so make sure you go ahead and follow us on Facebook. Here's the next one. And I think this is YouTube. It's YouTube time. Subscribe to our channel, everybody. We are building our channel. So make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to our channel, Rico No Suave Show. That's where we are at. So make sure you go ahead and follow us there. And last but not least, you know we're on Mixed Cloud. To all of our podcasters out there, you know this goes live. And then we go into podcasters. So make sure you follow us there. Mixcloud.com slash Rico No Suave Show. All right, everybody. Man. Thank you guys so much for being on the show with us today. We had such a great time. We'll see you guys next week. Man, we're going to have a great time once again for another great guest. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys later as we end off the show just like that.